There is a natural progression among successful owner operators to try to increase their profits by growing their fleet. And when I say they're growing a small fleet, let's say we're talking about between two and five trucks. And the thinking here is that, well, the truck I drive is successful, it's making money. So if I add a second truck, that will double my profits. And if I add a third truck, that will triple them. And I'm just here to tell you today that it's nowhere near that simple. This video is sponsored by GP Transco. Drivers. Now most owner operators, when they're considering buying their second truck, know that they need a driver for this truck and most owner operators already have a driver in mind. It'll be someone that they've worked with, someone they know, someone they trust or who has skills that they admire. But really, the first thing that owner operators need to realize if they're hiring someone to drive their second truck is that employees and your driver should be employees just to start off on the right foot for legal reasons later, but employees come with baggage. Now it may be that you've known this driver and you think he works the same as you and he thinks the same as you, but drivers have baggage and it comes in all shapes and forms. Perhaps he can't work every weekend because he's got, got the kids every other weekend or perhaps he can't come in till nine o'clock in the morning because he's got to drop the kids at school or, or the wife has a new job or something like that. There's always something going on with drivers and all sorts of drivers need to work for bigger carriers because bigger carriers have benefits. Lots of drivers need those benefits. So it's not everybody that wants to work for a small carrier. Some drivers have financial issues that they're not very good at handling and they'll come to you as the fleet owner and, and ask for advances or something like that all the time. And, and they don't particularly care when you and the truck get paid. All they know is they need money now and they expect you to help them out with that. Something else you need to keep in mind is that these drivers have to satisfy the requirements of your insurance company. And if you're leasing on with a big carrier that's going to use these trucks, They've got to be able to satisfy the carrier's requirements as well. Remember, as a small fleet owner, you don't have all the advantages of a big carrier. So what that means to you is, when a driver gets sick or wants time off, that truck of yours will sit. It's not like a big carrier that has spare drivers to put in the trucks to keep the equipment moving. You'll suffer a revenue loss every time this driver needs to take time off. And then there's the trucks. Most owner operators will start by buying a used second and third truck to start to build their fleet. But there are inherent problems with, with used trucks. They break down sometimes, often away from home, but they're gonna need regular maintenance, regular grease, they're gonna need to be fuel topped up all the time, and they've gonna be worked on, they've gotta be washed, or all sorts of time and expenses when you accumulate more trucks. Something else that's true of used trucks is that they never break down at home. They almost always break down on the road. So if you think as the owner of the small fleet that you'll be doing most of the work on the trucks, well, usually they don't break down at home. It'll be somewhere on the road and you'll be hiring someone to run out and fix that truck so you can limp at home. So you're not really saving as much on maintenance as you really think you are. Startup costs. There are all sorts of costs when you add on equipment. You're gonna need startup money for fuel, extra fuel, because you're gonna to need to keep that truck fueled until payday, but you want it to run constantly. So you've gotta have enough money to fuel that truck. You've gotta buy plates, you've gotta buy insurance, you've gotta pay for washes on the road and repairs, and you've got to be able to pay the driver when he needs to be paid, and that's usually before you get paid. Startup costs on trucks are expensive. Managing the operation. Today, operating a trucking business is 50% trucking and 50% paperwork. There are a million things that you've got to keep track of when you own a small trucking business. Everything from your maintenance costs and your payroll for your employees to your fuel costs to all sorts of other bills. And there are just too many issues with paperwork and with government, with the DOT, with your hours of service for your drivers and stuff like that, 
There's a myriad of things you've got to keep track of. There's more things to keep track of than you can possibly do driving a truck yourself and talking on the cell phone, using your cell phone to run your business. That just doesn't work. So your small fleet needs to be able to produce enough revenue that you can afford the tools that you need to operate successfully, like a professional bookkeeper, a professional accountant, maybe a dispatcher, someone to manage the operation while you're out on the road working the truck that you drive. In the event that you decide to come off the road to manage your little trucking company, you're going to need to put a driver back in your truck. Don't forget that you're still going to need to pay him a wage to keep that truck moving. And are you really any farther ahead at that point? For years now at Smart Trucking, we have been telling you that GP Transco is a great place to work. They were recently voted a top workplace by Energage, and that's a company that polls employees. So everybody that's working at GP Transco thinks it's a great place to work. This trucking company just keeps getting better and better. They're winning awards left, right, and center. Why wouldn't you go there? Check them out at gptransco.com. You'll need a credit line or lots of cash. I have lost track of how many owner operators I have known that have grown their small trucking fleet when freight was paying well and the fuel wasn't particularly expensive. And then a couple years into it and they've got their equipment financed over a five to seven year period. All of a sudden, a couple years later, the freight rates have dropped, the fuel costs have gone up, their operating profits have shrunk to almost nothing, but they still are locked into a truck payment that they negotiated and they've got to pay that for the next five to seven years. So all of a sudden, you're responsible for all this equipment that isn't making the same kind of money that it did when you first bought it. Truckstop.com has determined that it costs 51% more to run a trucking company in 2022 than it did in 2021. I found that to be a pretty sobering statistic. And when you look at the numbers, you realize that the majority of that cost increase was just in fuel alone. So think about going into 2023 now when the fuel is still too high and the freight rates are still too low. Five trucks could be the magic number. Insider tip here, I found that it was far easier to have a viable small fleet when we hit five trucks. For some reason, everything just seemed to get easier. We were able to negotiate higher freight rates, better rates for our fuel, better cost of insurance. Everything just seemed to go suddenly more smoothly. Our fixed costs became more affordable, things like the office and the yard and things like that, because we had that extra revenue coming in from the greater number of trucks and it just, just made everything a whole lot easier. In conclusion, I'd like to tell you a few things that I learned. And the first thing is that just because you can drive a truck really well, doesn't mean you can operate a small fleet really well. It's two completely different sets of skills. Something else I've learned is that you just can't believe every truck driver that you talk to, drivers are telling you that they're making $10,000 a week clear. You can't believe everybody and you can't believe everything you hear and read. Now, if you were to ask me today, would I start a small fleet in 2023? My honest answer would be no. I, I think that the operating costs are far too high. The fuel is far too expensive and the freight rates are far too low. So no, I wouldn't do it. There are a whole lot more aspects to building a small fleet that I haven't even touched on. If I've missed something that you can think of, leave it in the comments below. Stay safe. Keep the rubber side down. If you're thinking about building a small fleet, think it through thoroughly and carefully because it's a gutsy move. I'll see you on the backhaul.